A commentary and a reflection. First, the commentary. On Good Friday, I always think of a certain envelope that I bring with me from parish to parish. It's uh, sealed, but on the inside are some things I've written that I think are important. On the outside of the envelope, I've labeled it to be opened in the event of my death. And I always keep that envelope in the front desk drawer of whatever office I happen to be occupying in the parish where I'm assigned. The weird thing is that whenever I need a paper clip, I open the front drawer of the desk and I see that envelope. And it reminds me that I'm going to die someday. How does the death of Jesus Christ take away sin? Well, of course, his death does not eliminate sin from being in the world. And his death does not eliminate suffering from being in the world. But we can get a hint of how Jesus takes away sin in his death by looking at how he took away sin in his life. In the Gospels, whenever Jesus took sin away, he first took the sin in and then gave it back as something else. He took in hatred and gave back love. He took in anger and gave back blessing. He took in hurt and gave back compassion. To be able to do that, Jesus had to make the decision to be okay with being vulnerable. Now, some might say they wouldn't want to go through life being weak. I didn't say weak. I said vulnerable. And there is a great invisible strength in being vulnerable. I'll show you. Take a pro football player and put him in a room with a newborn baby. Now you tell me which of those two is more powerful. The football player is stronger in many ways, but the baby being so vulnerable is its strength. Whenever we're confronted with a baby's immense vulnerableness, everything in us that's good and decent and moral and gentle grows. Anybody can break someone's heart, but only the truly vulnerable can soften someone's heart. So the choice Jesus had on the cross was not should he save himself or should he let himself die? It was how should he let himself die? Should he die angry and bitter at those short-sighted people who responded to his love with their ignorant violence? 
or should he stay vulnerable and die with a warm heart? In the end, Jesus was true to himself. He was true to his gospel. He risked everything on goodness and breathed his last, taking cruelty in and giving it back as forgiveness with no regrets. In that sense, you could say that Jesus died doing what he loved. Which brings us to the reflection. At first, I didn't think I belonged here. This is certainly not where I thought I should end up. After all I've done, you see, I'm a, I was a criminal. Me and some others lived in caves on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. A bad road, worse at night. We made our living through violence. We never took on people in big groups, but a family traveling alone was an easy target as well as anyone dumb enough to walk that road by themselves. Holding them down and shaking a six-foot staff at them would usually do the trick. Threaten them with being beaten, and they'd almost always give up. But I've been known to break a few bones in my day. I don't think I ever killed anyone. But I never stayed around long enough to find out for sure. The first time I met Jesus of Nazareth was at a dinner in Jericho at the fancy home of one of those rich tax collectors. When I was introduced to Jesus, he looked me in the eye for a really long time. Time, a lot longer than was comfortable. He knew who I was. He knew what I was. So I looked away and moved off into a corner. During dinner, Jesus was the only person who spoke, and everybody hung on his every word. The things he said about God were so much better than anything I had heard ever. I wanted so much to speak to him personally afterwards, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. He knew what I was. Several weeks after that, me and one of my friends got caught. The others in our group got away, but they caught the two of us. We both got thrown into prison. No mercy for the likes of us. It's so strange how things happen to work out. They crucified my friend and me on both sides of that man I met at dinner. Mobs of people were around the three of us, big crowds, Pharisees too, all because of this man in the middle. Nobody was there for me. You should have heard how the people were laughing at Jesus. It wasn't happy laughing. It was awful. My friend and me did not receive a beating, but the Romans had beaten Jesus before nailing him up. It must have been bad. There was a lot of red coming down his backside. 
I can understand me and my friend getting punished like this, but not Jesus. And still, the mob pointed and howled and were having a really good time of it. And my stupid friend was making fun of him too. So I had to shut him up. You miserable thug, I said. Show some decency. We're getting what we deserve. But he didn't do anything. Leave him alone. I couldn't get that dinner out of my mind the night I met Jesus close up. I couldn't forget the things he said about God. So I took a deep breath and called over. Jesus, I said. His eyes were closed. One of them was a little swollen, but he moved his head a little. I said, I was there that night in Jericho. I met you that night at dinner. Remember me? With his eyes still closed, he moved his head up and then down. He remembered me. I said, I didn't forget what you said about God. His head went up and down again. I said, Jesus, and this time his eyes opened a little and he looked at me. I said, when you come into your kingdom, would you, would you remember me? And he whispered out the words, paradise with me today. Then he closed his eyes. He was fading fast. Not long after, I heard some women crying, and I looked over, and I could tell by his color that he was gone. I remember the soldiers on the other side of him breaking my friend's legs so he would die, and then coming for me. That's the last thing I remember. I woke up here. It's so beautiful, I can't describe it. There's a, a warm light, and I feel accepted and loved and forgiven. The limbs have grown cold, and the sky has turned dark in the middle of the day. But a heart brimming with love lies before us to be opened in the event of his death.